Hello, hello, Natron Nation and those who are subscribed to my YouTube channel. This is Omar Brown, your admin. And today I'm going to come to you from Euclid, Ohio, discussing this old node that's been inside Natron for a while. And uh, the name of the node is called the Kier. As you can see right here in this graph view area, I have a lot of these particular nodes um, disabled. But what I'm going to do is eventually start disabling, disabling each one individually and tell you the reason why I happen to go that particular route, why I use that particular node, why in that particular order. And there's no rhyme or reason. It just seemed to be... Uh, it just looked good to me to be the way I put it in that particular order. So without further ado, let me go ahead and start talking about this particular image here. And why did I choose this particular image? Well, I found this particular image here on the internet. As you, as you can see, the resolution is 1200 by 508. So that's telling me that this image has been cropped out. Um, probably from a higher resolution, probably was in 1920 by 1080, and I just wanted to uh, make it a small image to just to bring more attention to the talent, this railing here, we filmed against this green screen. Now, I have a philosophy when it comes to dealing with any particular plugin, whether it be in a layer base, or it be um, node base, Whereas that the plugin itself is only as good as its proxies on low quality images. What I mean by that? Well, I'm working on this particular green screen image, you know, and it's an 8 bit image. We got a lot of blockiness going on at the pixel level. So it came off the internet. So you can imagine basically that when they save this file, it lost a lot of color information before they had posted it. So to test how good the um, the plugging is, if I get a good result with this particular plugin on this crappy node, then the nodes basically to me is worth its salt in any particular form or fashion when it comes to production. Because you know, you can have a uh, high quality 422 uncompressed or 444 uncompressed green screen footage and of course the green screen plugins whether it be the Kier or the Chroma Kier those that's inside nature on they're going to perform you know exceptionally but you can test out the node in the algorithms in those particular nodes depending on what you use is that if it make crap look pretty decent you have to pull like a decent key with the same amount of value adjustments for crappy videos you do with good video then to me hey that's a good plugin so let's zoom into this particular plugin um, image here as you can see here there's a lot of noise there's an alias on the edges there there's um, steps whereas that is um, lost a lot of color information within the gradation so that's the indication right there we did it with a low quality file so let me zoom back out here so what i'm going to do here is show you different uh, features that's going on with this kia node and then eventually here i'm going to add all this particular background here okay so without further ado let's go ahead and get started let me disable the kia i mean just uh, activate the kia node as you can see automatically that the key thing here has um, this note that pulled the key. I had already did that all, uh, before, but what I'm going to do is bring this in and show you this information that's over here. Now I'm going to disable it. And as you can see, this green spot right here is a lot brighter than my selection over here. And you have to ask you a question, ask yourself a question. Um, why is that? Well, here's my philosophy and thoughts on that. Um, every, uh, let's say, chroma key node or keyer node or whatever the node may be in your particular um, compositor have different algorithms that are coded to operate on a certain hue of green. 
to circumvent that of like saying oh we don't have like a key light node or we don't have like a primat or we don't have like a v key you know or 3d keyer or master keyer that you sometimes you see in programs like say smoke um that's by autodesk of course you know they have the master keyer all these high-end keyers so what did i do i said you know it makes more sense to try to pull a color or to pull a key by selecting the color that's a, like a few shades darker than it is of the whole entire screen because when you start reaching up into those brighter colors you're not really getting enough to me enough range of color detail because you're not going to be able to go any higher and you're not going to be able to go any lower when you start reaching into these little bright pixels here so what I did I zoomed into a particular area here where I noticed that there was like darker colors so I mean not darker colors but a darker shade of green because you start to notice here that in the brighter colors of the green screen you can see there's a hint of yellow pale and all this other stuff so that's why you can never really trust the not, say, not saying that there's over brightness from the lamps being too close to the green screen but sometimes the material that you're using the temperature of the light that you are using and whatever else in the environment that could be casting a certain a certain shade or blocking up a certain amount of light to give you that pure hue or pure green the brighter this particular colors there you'll notice it start to fade now this right here also too can be i'm sure it is that it can be a um advent of uh evidence of that you know the compression from a jpeg file so in this case it's much safer to go with colors that fall more closer to the chroma green as opposed to this high translucent or not say translucent though but it seemed like it has some kind of um certain particles in the paint or maybe within the cloth that's giving us that particular color so that's why you see i've chosen the dark color and when i activate that you see that it pulls a lot of that other color in there even though you see some of the, the same color still matches i'm not really pulling too much there because what we have this and it's called spill and this is spill that's overlaying onto you know the edges of the clothes the edges of this little railing system here so if i go to the alpha channel uh, let me uh do this you see with the alpha channel here you know it's uh give me a, a pretty decent key here nice little pull so i'm bringing this way back down to here and that's the reason why i chose to do that now i want to talk to you a little bit something about this particular keyer node here let me come over here now, if you look over here in this particular matter of fact, let me just expand this. We have like all our input process component channels with red, red, green, blue, alpha. We have a key color. As you can see also, sometimes uh, you can animate that key color. And we have these individual modes here. Now, inside Natron, you have two keyers. You have one that's called a chroma keyer and this one is called a keyer. This particular keyer is um say similar if not a little bit more feature based than the key that's inside um the founding nuke and if you see right here we have luminance we have color we have um, screen and we have none now luminance will most likely you know it be if you have like some black and white images and you want to pull a certain luminance to act as a key to overlay or act as another uh, mass driving another effect color is like a mode where is that when you're not dealing with the chroma blue the chroma green the chroma red 
you may have like other colors that haven't been definite shades or like up on a person's shirt or a a wall or a certain kind of hues of color that falls out of the chroma red green and blue you use that color there at the same time too if you take your pointer and hover over it it tell you exactly what those individual things that it does and how they operate now what I'm using is the screen and the screen is basically dealing with all the green screen would it be um, well all the chroma colors would it be red blue and green it just so happened I happen to have a project that's in green and none now none is uh, not like you're saying you're not pulling the key but the none mode here functions as a uh, color suppression and how that will later on I'll show you here how I'm using this second key here and I'm going to be using that as a color suppression now inside this particular key here you see that yes you know there's a dispel which is in other words being color suppression I don't want to I didn't want to use that on the first go around with the key I just want to make sure I'm pulling everything I need to pull that I possibly can pull Use all my softness, my tolerance, finding the center point of where I need to pull the key, and then later down the road when I do my erosion of the of the edges, then I'm blurring my mat to soften it, and then I'm gonna be applying the uh what's it called the color suppression. So let's go a little further now. As you can see here, I had already pulled the key, selected the colors, working on the screen, did all this red here. I'm not using no dispel. And you must have to make sure that you put it on pre mode because you put it on intermediate, it shows this particular color here. Now, if I put it on pre mode, you will see here that it um, multiplies the alpha times the color, and you get the black, and you get like the alpha as well. Now the source alpha is basically you have what things called ignore. That's when you you know just dealing with the first um, round layer of the input of like saying you know what there's no other alpha that's coming that's in the image alpha channel or mass within this that's been in, uh, embedded into the image like a EXR file or a PNG file. It's saying to ignore that. Now let's say for instance that you have a roto going on is is the image in image mass out mass this is when you can go inside and say you know what add to inside mask you know and that's when you say use the inside mask when you want to do something that's called a multi keyer or a multi key now what is this multi key the multi key is a concept in a in a, in a process where is that you may have a, 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 a actor standing on two different shades of green the background may be a little bit brighter than what the person is standing on the floor so the pull of, instead of using the key to do both trying to pull both colors you can key one rotoscope it or put a, a rotoscope mask around the talent key out the first um the foreground i mean the, the background with the wall and apply another key add another keyer to key out the floor so you use this and a inter inter intermediate level and then you go to, uh, to inside mass and then whatever you did to the first gear will get passed down to the second gear so the one key won't be canceling the other one out now that's a little bit more of a technical process but I will come back to you probably later on do another tutorial and show you exactly how that works so just keep in mind that that process is based upon a concept or processes when you have to do a multi key. Now, we have this. Now, we see that we have a, a key. Now, we have the individual ed um, edges. So, I come down to the erode node, double click on that, and you see that when I activate it, it gets those edges and it gets just enough to pull back on the edges of the talent and also on the railings but not too much where that gets eaten away at everything and I only have it here on one 
this is the standard when well, it's the default when I put it on two you see that it eat up some little bit more but at the same time too you know because this is a low res image you're not really getting too much uh, fine detail so that's why it's always best to like so you know what give me one pixel of erosion and also make sure that it's on um, unmultiplied because based upon how you got the thing here whatever you got it um, composing over of you already have some kind of pre multiplication going in between this gear and this erosion node with anything that's inside that you want to always work with un multiplied keys and then later down the road go and apply a pre multiplier so if you have like a something that's already pre multiplied and then you go add another pre multiplication node on that you're going to start getting black edges around your image so that's another um, tutorial to discuss those kind of alpha channels straight the pre multiplied and multiplied uh, procedures and compositing so we have our erode node erode of that green around the image there so it looks it's getting you know it's not the best but it's getting a little better there so now let's go to our alpha channel now you can see here our little alpha channel there has like a little bit of jagged edges so what I want to do is come here and add our blur node and what the blur node does it just softens the edges a little bit as you can see so let me just like um, double click that and bring it up I have like a two pixel um, blur uh, ratio so what that blur ratio is that's like is there's a horizontal and there's a vertical and each one of them is being blurred by two pixels so when you dealing with or working with low quality images it's always good to blur your mat to soften up the edges a little bit and if you can't see it let me get a little closer now look at this particular corner edges here she's got a jagged so if I take that blur activate it it softens it up a little bit disable it that minute I'm um, there disable it enable it and you notice that giving me a little more fine detail there so let's come back at that full screen you know so you're really not going to notice too much of the difference of how it looks like until you composite it against a background but it's always good to have that knowledge that yes my edges are softened okay now what's going on here the next step I have is another keyer like I told you before the first keyer only just pulled the color pulled the key but I did not add any kind of dispel but now I'm going to activate this keyer and as you can see I have pulled some of the dispel and I double click on this particular node and you can see right here I have none selected still dealing with the um, pre multiply but when you're dealing with uh, using the keyer as a as a dispeller you have to make sure that you have thing called add to inside mask why because we already have pulled the key with this first keyer it generated a mat or a key so in order to apply a dispel on this uh, dispellation on top of that you have to tell it, look whatever was the mat or the key from this image here bring it in as the alpha source so therefore whatever you are dispelling it will only apply to whatever is inside that mat as you can see here add to the inside mask so we only affecting whatever's inside this inside mask let me disable it and put it in there and there you have it and you can see right here that uh, I got the levels here is kind of high now I have to say this this keyer node is a very good keyer it's a great keyer but the algorithms inside the keyer node is not as sophisticated as the chroma key and the reason I chose this particular key to demonstrate is to show you the extra features and like you know when you just now learning to um, pull like individual different kinds of keys it's always good to start off with this particular key before you move up to the other keys like the chroma key or start using the HSVT, HSVT tool um, as a key. 
that's another tutorial for another day so let's do a recap take this off this off take this off take this off this right here is the original image i pulled the key you give me that you notice that i have like all these individual edges so i want to erode that by one pixel in other words the erode is just the same thing as if you're using after effects it has something that's called like a choker a matte choker um, you see that in other keyers like prime mat or key light where they have like another another section of the keyer itself another in, uh, implementation implementation oh yeah, another implemented feature on the in the node itself or the plugin itself where they have something that's called ch um, matte choker or choke matte or matte erode whatever case they are, everybody have different names in this case here the when they developed the, these key nodes and chroma key nodes inside Natron, they didn't put that inside the individual um, key. They have that as an individual node. And my thoughts is like, you know, that's good. Because when you have like an individual node you can do that's doing uh, mat choking or erosion, stuff like that, you can add a lot more features to that individual node that won't be always irrelevant necessary to have in as a regular key or node another tutorial for another day so let's continue so I now have this blur node or well, I have the blur node because I wanted to soften the edges of my mask to move my key there 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 now that's on now go back here and now I want to try um, activate this gear and it acts as my dispeller now what's next I come here and I have like this um, color correction node now once I activate that you see what this node here is doing close this out master ah, now we in the master key um, the color correction portion of this thing here and you like why do I have this right here well I did this right because at the point right here, at this point I'm finished pulling my key doing my erosion finished doing my softening of my mat and I did my dispiller right now this particular node here is acting as a color correction so that I have a certain hue that's matching the background so let me turn this off now it's very subtle now I'm gonna activate my merge node and over here I'm gonna activate this background image and I have a lot of stuff here let me turn this on and I'm gonna turn this on and that should be it for right now and oh here's what's going on what I've been showing you so far has been the input of this information right here. But because this thing here is not attached to this particular node here, let me show you exactly what it's going to look like when I go to input 2. This is where I have it. And as you can see here, I have this little school church. I can't remember what it was. as my background image. You know, and it's a basic image. You can see here that in its native uh, file format size, it's 1206 by 740. So if I click on this right here with the, um, the resize node, it brings it down to fit into the 1200 by 508. And there we have it. But you're going to notice something else here. That I have created a particular uh, an effect to get this thing most life here because you notice in this particular section here there's something else that's overlaid there and what that is is just this section right here where I activate these tools here one at a time you start seeing that and then you get into the blur it gives me that little highlights there so you know let me go to three deactivate all these this is the original image 
So what I want to do, I want it to be sized that so it fit in the same time too. Have it where this section right here, two noses coming across each other. They will fit on top each of each other. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to take one particular side there and turn it to a grayscale. As you see here, jumped all the way down. I got it on 709, but if you look at 601 average, I don't know if you can see this here though, but I got it on max. So the max is giving me the, the brightest of the white pixels and the darkest of the black pixels. And what I decided to do there, and I said, hey, since I'm going to be overlaying this, let me um, try to fix up this little overlay here by using like an S curve. As you can see here, I want to try to give me more of that nice to the decent contrast. And then on top of that, I added a blur node to soften up a little bit. And as you see here, I got this thing here now is screening over the background over with the other original image. So I can always make that adjustment. Since too much blur, where the case may be, you know, I'm going to leave it at five or a half the size there. Now I'm going to come back to input two, and I'm going to use this right here to somewhat give me a nice little adjustment where the colors be somewhat able to match. Now, as you can see here, there's a little bit of yellow left insi inside this image here, and, and there's some a little bit of brown. So I didn't get too much into the color correction detail, but this one is just to show you how this node here, the chroma key node, no, well, the key or node, operate when you're pulling the key, doing the erosion, doing the blur, and then you're doing it as, using it again as a dispeller. All this right here, basically set up to get this so that for the background can show up. So if I click on this right here, and I, if you notice here, I had already to pull a uh, highlight from with one of the windows here. So once I turn this on, you see that it gave me somewhat close to a match of what was going on in the sky. Now it may not look like a match to you because I have been doing all this other stuff here. But if I turn it off, you notice that inside, let me get a little closer. It's turned off. The color's going back to the original mute brown, I guess, whatever that color is. But I'll turn it on. You see that this color here in the highlights is matching the colors in the sky. And highlights. Turn it off. Turn it back on. Turn it off. Turn it back on. And that's what we have there. A basic little composite. Now, what I want to do from there is go and take, like, all this, the background image, and the foreground image and run it through another uh, color correct no color lookup node and again I applied another S curve so to see what look, see what that looks like. So what it did here there, if you look at it, it seemed like um someone's doing a, a cheap day for night. The, the, uh, the picture was already filmed at night, but because I added the saturation, add a little bit of uh, a little bit more of the S curve. Then I added the resize, I did that little blur, and then I did a screen on top of the original image. It caused like a, what do you call it? A multiplication of colors where the sky seemed to be more bright than it originally was. So, turned it on there, tried to bring it right back down there to its original tone and get more of that little evening night time for lovers of my passing power, or oh, alma mater, I don't know. But and that's what I have there. Now, you're going to notice there, well, what is this little solid thing here going into a switch? Well, I was using the switch node to give, to, to do more or less something I was checking my mat. Because sometimes when you're using these key nodes, you can do a nice little sharp key and pull. But sometimes you you can't notice it up up front. So let me go to one. Let me go to the outfit here. Sometimes, like you know, the things look up pretty clean, but when you start zooming in on some of these particular masses, you might you may have pulled too much, and sometimes it's, it's not visible to the naked eye. So that's why I had created this little solid that is, that gave me like a red color to show through. Now if I click on, I used to switch and say, okay, look here. 
if you allow 10 inputs and you can say on each end of these inputs I want something else to show to let me know that there is no issues going on with the mat so um, this right here is zero this right here and put this on one so I'm going to activate that come back here and put it on two I'm sorry go back here come to the switch and then put this on one so therefore when we go when you're in your match and stuff like that it will usually will show right through if there's a problem with the mat and that's the only reason why I chose to do that it's basically it's like a secondary um, uh, what you call it well it's one of my secondary uh, proof of process to making sure that my mats are clean nothing is showing through it and over keyed and under key so let me just enable that come back here switch my thing back to the zero which is supposed to be the input right here and that is my image and that is the setup basically of using the key or node to pull the key do all your individual erosion and make sure you want always when you use a low quality um, footage you always want to try to blur that mat as you can see here I can't stress this enough, especially when you are um, compositing against other low quality pictures as well. It does come in handy. So let's try to zoom in here. Let me see if that would make any bit of difference. To show you what I'm talking about. And you see right there. Go right here. Now you see, uh, you mostly can tell in this particular. I see it when the blur is off. You see, we have more of these particular jagged edges here. But if we turn it back on, the edges are smooth. So when you're at 100, it just seems like it's like a basic light wrap. Now, the light wrap is another feature I would have to show another day. But basically, what the light wrap does, it it's like another mat. Uh, it's one video. It's called an edge mat. And what it does, it used it's like an inverse of the mat of the edges, and you use that to soften the edges around the the talent or the foreground, so that a little bit of the background seems like it's just bleeding over into the foreground. That's basically what the light mat, uh, light wrap does, and I'll be showing how to do that in another tutorial. Let's see, um, I don't have any more other images I can like try to overlay like mist uh, probably put like a little bit of moonlight or where the case may be um, but I do know basically you want to try to do s fake some some uh, additional lighting over the heads there you can use something like a roto node and draw like some shapes some splines and stuff like that and just soften the heck out of them and just like screen them over to give like a nice little particular effect too more like say for instance all this bright lights you can try to like use some kind of uh like a rotor paint try to draw an edge mat around here soften it a little bit probably around his head on his cheek soften it up and then just uh do a screen mode level on it you know whole multiple of things so that is it for right now i hope you understood a little bit more about the keyer node and also to the processes of combining all the images together Oh, one more thing I want to say. When you work with the Nikia nodes, never put it in the composite. I know that um, you do you do in a composite, but when you're working with the Kia, the composite is only basically, it's, it's, it's more like used as a fact checker more than anything else. And that's if you say, for instance, when you have your Kia and you have a background image right here, and that's what it is. You use this background image here to check again your mats and you put it in a composite so that composite will activate that background so that you know anything is bleeding through. Okay? So you notice this particular area over here. When I put it back on pre mode, 
It changes there. It gives more that, that, that it tightens up your mat, and that's the processes that you need to always keep it in. Okay. Hope that's what's useful. This is Omar Brown, admin for Natron Nation, a Facebook group, and also to my YouTube channel for Natron Beta Test. Have a good evening.